Math 1314, Section IC1, Spring 2022, Tyler Junior College, Section 1.5, Linear Inequalities, Video 3, Compound Inequalities with and or or. These are easy to spot. They literally have the word and in the middle, or they have the word or in the middle. Let's take a look at them. And by the way, again, if you have not uh, completed or at least gone over the Math 0314 Weekly Work 02, you're going to see some things in this video uh, that were covered in there that you might not be familiar with. So go check it out if you haven't. All right, we're going to solve the compound inequality. Two-fifths x is less than or equal to 12 and negative three x is less than 21. So what does this mean? This means that whatever our solution is has to make both of these true simultaneously. So for example, um, the number zero would not be part of the solution because if we put zero here, we would get zero is less than or equal to 12, which is true. But if we put zero, I take that back, it would be a solution. Zero is less than 21, which is also true. So zero makes both of them true. Uh, but negative one would not be a solution. Excuse me. How about negative 10? Uh, I'll tell you what, let me stop looking for things that are or aren't solutions. My point is to be a solution to an and compound inequality, you must make both inequalities true, not just one of them. And so how do we solve this? Well, we start by solving the individual inequalities the way we normally would. Uh, the two-fifths x is less than or equal to 12. I wouldn't let that bother you. It's just a fraction. Now, you can solve it by multiplying both sides by five first to clear out the fractions. But I want to go over a move that is a little bit more efficient uh, as long as you just get over fractions. Um, there is another way to get rid of a fraction that's multiplied, and that is to multiply both sides of the inequality by the reciprocal of the fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides of this inequality by five over two. By doing that, it sets up a double cancellation on the left. The twos cancel and the fives cancel, which instantly leaves the x by itself. Less than or equal to, we did not do something that caused us to turn the sign around. And on the right side, we have 12 times five halves. But remember, you can look at a fraction as a division problem. So we can look at this as 12 divided by two and do that part first, which I think I will. 12 divided by two is six. That leaves six times five, which is 30. Let me move all this, or let me move these, the instructions up just a little bit. It's getting kind of crowded in there. All right, so on the right side, we have five times six, which is 30. And our first half is solved. So X must be less than or equal to 30. And on the other inequality, negative three X is less than 21. We can solve it by dividing both sides by negative three. Warning divided both sides by negative, that will invoke a reversal of sign, which means we will have X because the negative three's cancel is greater than, and 21 divided by three, excuse me, 21 divided by negative three is negative seven. So our solution is X is less than or equal to 30 and X is greater than or equal to seven. But what do we do with that? Well, here's what we do with it. The solution to an and compound inequality, obvious because of the word and, is the intersection of the solutions of the individual inequalities. If you don't know what intersection is, then you should have done that weekly work for math 0314 by now. Uh, but, but I'll give you a quick synopsis of what it is. We basically have two solutions. We have x is less than or equal to 30 and x is greater than negative 7 x is less than or equal to 30 on a number line. I'm going to put 30 to the right, and I'm going to shade to the left because it is less than or equal to 30. And on the 30, we'll put the bracket, the square bracket. Let me move that 30. I've, you think I'd figure out to draw that a little bit better by now. We'll put the 30 a little below the shaded part. But we also have x is greater than negative 7. If we draw another number line below it, 
now that I'm looking at two numbers, I have to put them relatively correct to each other. Negative seven being less than 30 needs to be to the left of 30. And I'll draw it a little bit lower because we are drawing the number line for X is greater than negative seven. We will go to the right of negative seven where the numbers greater than negative seven live and on the negative seven use a parentheses. But these aren't the solution to the original compound inequality. The intersection of them is. In other words, if we were to superimpose these numbers lines on top of each other, where would they overlap? I can actually make that happen. I'm going to try to grab the blue number line. I think if I grabbed it all, and I'm going to move it down to superimpose it on top of the red one. The intersection is literally where these overlap. They overlap between negative seven and 30. I'm gonna undo everything I just did because it's a little messy, but that's what I mean by where they overlap, their intersection. So let's get rid of the yellow and let's put that back up there. And let's draw the solution. Negative seven to 30. If we want X, come back here, please. If we want X is less than or equal to 30 and emphasis on the word and X is greater than negative seven, then we would shade between negative seven and 30 parentheses on the negative seven bracket on the 30. And what interval is that? Well, that interval is parentheses negative seven comma 30 bracket. So that's how you solve, solve an and inequality. You solve each one separately, graph their number line separately. The solution is where they overlap, where their intersection is. But what about an or problem? Well, let's solve this compound inequality. X plus one is less than or equal to 17 or two X minus one is less than seven. When you have an or inequality, it's a little bit looser than an and. For an and inequality, your numbers must make both halves true at the same time. For an or inequality, it only has to make at least one of them true. It's got to be a solution to this one or a solution to that one. It could possibly be a solution to both. We're going to start by solving each of these individually, subtracting one from both sides to get x is less than or equal to 16 on the first inequality. Or on the second one, it's going to take two moves. Add one to both sides to get 2x is less than 8. And then divide both sides by 2 to get x is less than 4. So our solution is x is less than or equal to 16 or x is less than 4. But what would this look like on a number line? Well, when you do the number lines for an and compound inequality, you take the intersection of the two number lines, the overlap. What do we do when it's an or? The solution to an or compound inequality is the union, is the union of the solutions of the individual inequalities. Now, what do I mean by union? Well, let's sketch each of these solutions separately and then I'll show you. X is less than or equal to 17, excuse me, 16. It was 16, wasn't it? Yes. X is less than four, I believe was the other one. Yes. If I draw the number lines for these individually, I have to put 16 further to the right than I put four. X is less than or equal to 16 would be, to the left of 16 and it would include 16. So it has a square bracket on it. But on the other one, X is less than or equal to four. It would be to the left of four also because it's less than, and I think I said or equal to, it's not. It's just X is less than four because it's less than, <coughs> excuse me. It would have a round parentheses on it. So how do I form the union of these? Well, I literally join them together into one number line. You can think of it 
as, and I'm going to attempt to grab the top number line, not, not, the, whole, not the top. I'm not sure what's going on here. Give me one second, folks. Do some house cleaning here. All right, there we go. Well, my face is blocking some of the words. We'll fix that. Um, but to find the union of these two number lines, all I have to do is imagine putting them top of, on top of each other and then join them together into one big uh, picture. Let me see if I can grab the top one. I think I did. Let's move it down. And if we put it on top of the bottom one, the union is what you get when you fuse those together into one shaded part of a number line. So all together, when I join them together, it goes from negative infinity to 16. And it would look something like this. Give me a second to get my drawing ready. X is less than, excuse me. I'm not sure what just happened there. X is less than or equal to 16 or X is less than four. When I join them together, they stretch all the way from negative infinity to 16, which had a bracket on it. And that means that our interval is parentheses, negative infinity, comma 16 with the bracket. So for an and compound inequality, you see where they overlap, but for an or compound inequality, you just join them together into one big uh, number line. Now you may be wondering, why is the bottom number line the same as the top? It's because the top shaded part completely absorbed the bottom shaded part. All right, uh, I just wanna go over some unusual solution sets that you're gonna see in some of these and and or problems. You'll notice I didn't have anything to solve. I just wrote these, the, uh, the individual solutions, X is less than five and X is greater than or equal to 10. Well, if we were to draw these number lines individually, five has to be to the left, 10 has to be to the right, since five is less than 10. If we were shading X is less than five, then we would shade to the left of five and put a parentheses on the five. And if we were shading X is greater than or equal to 10, we would shade to the right of 10 and we would put a bracket on the 10 because it said or equal. But remember how and works and is the intersection and is where the two number lines would overlap. If I, that's not what I meant to do. If I were to grab the top number line and try to move it down on top of the bottom one, where do those two number lines intersect? Where do they overlap? They don't. Looks like I grabbed the or equal to also. So there is no intersection here. And think about it, it makes perfect sense. There is no way a number can simultaneously be less than five and at the same time greater than or equal to 10. It's like saying you're too young to vote, but you're, too, you're old enough to drink. That doesn't make sense. So if there is no intersection, what does that mean? That means that there's actually no solution. This can and does happen when you're trying to satisfy two conditions that simply are incompatible. You can't be less than five and greater than or equal to 10 at the same time. So that's one unusual solution set. No intersection, no solution. Another unusual so, uh, solution set can be illustrated with this one. Let's say we draw the number line for X is greater than five and the number line for X is less than or equal to 10. We'll put five over here a little bit to the left ten to the right. And what would our number lines look like? Well, greater than five would start at five with the parentheses and then go to the right because it's greater than. And less than or equal to 10 would start at negative infinity and go all the way to 10 where we would put a bracket. And for an or inequality, we join these together. Well, what does it look like when I put these number lines on top of each other? Let's see if I can make my keyboard cooperate. 
if we move the top number line down to the bottom one, and remember that we're doing or, we're fusing these together and our solution is anything that's shaded. Well, what part of the number line is shaded? Red, excuse me, green, pink, or both? The answer is the whole number line. So sometimes when you are taking the union of two number lines, when you're joining them together, you actually get the entire number line. So our solution would be everything. We would draw a number line. That's not what I wanted to do. We would draw a number line. There would be no need to put the 10 or the five because we're gonna shade in the whole thing anyway. Hold on, there we go. Now, what's the interval, interval for that? Well, give me one second to grab all of this and move it up for a second. Turn me off, there we go. What's the interval for the entire number line? Well, open parentheses starts at negative infinity, comma, ends, and I'm air quotes, I'm using air quotes, ends at positive infinity also with the parentheses. So it's possible when you do an or to get the entire number line if your, if your shaded portions overlap, but go in opposite directions. And the last one I wanna show you is one that looks like this, X is less than five or X is greater than or equal to 10. If we drew the number lines, give me a second to move this up. The only reason it's slow is because I've got a toolbar that you can't see but it's kind of right on top of where I just moved the inequalities. Um, but if we were to draw these number lines individually, there's the one for five, here's the one for 10. If we were to shade in X is less than five, we would shade to the left of five, parentheses on the five. And if we were to do X is greater than or equal to 10 on the other number line, we would start at 10 with a bracket opening to the right and then shade to the right. And then or says we join these together. So what does it look like if I grab the top number line and move it down on top of the bottom one? Not the straightest of lines. Well, our solution is what's shaded, but here's the problem. The parts that are shaded are disconnected. I cannot represent the entire shaded part with a single interval. An interval starts and stops. This number line starts, stops, starts again, and stops again. Specifically, the left half goes from negative infinity to five, so parentheses on both, and the right half starts at 10 with a bracket and goes to infinity. It's impossible to write one interval to represent two disconnected parts of a number line. So how would we write this solution in interval notation? The answer is we would put a union symbol between them. And that's the best that we could do. And if you don't know what that is, that means you hadn't looked at the Math 0314 Weekly Work 02. So you know what? Go look at it.